It's the Atlanta Grubber Podcast with surefire restaurant reviews from throughout the Atlanta metropolitan area. Hosted by Joe Duffy, there is a special focus on his home chomping grounds of Alpharetta and Roswell. You can follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Atlanta Grubber and on atlantagrubber.com. Without further ado, here is your infallible restaurant whisperer, Joe Duffy. Here we are, episode of 11 of the Atlanta Grubber Podcast. We're going to cover Mediterranean, Afghani, Korean, Cantonese, Japanese, a place that specializes in French fries, and a whole lot more. Please support the friends of Atlanta Grubber, offshoreinsiders.com, sports betting picks, Duffy Scents for Scentsy Products, that's Duffy, S-C-E-N-T-S, Mitch's Meats and Fish in Roswell for the finest. Meats and Fish, great fishmonger and butcher from the Earth Restaurant and Brewery in Roswell. And of course, the preferred charity of the Atlanta Grubber is Star House. Check out starhousefoundation.org. Samad Mediterranean Grill and Market, 8897 Roswell Road in Sandy Springs. It is truly a mom and pop shop with Chef Jamal in the kitchen and his wife Leslie running the front of the house. Garlic sauce is what many fans really rave about. Mmm, garlicky. Still a classic hole in the wall, though the landlords have certainly spent some money to breathe life back into the dumpy shopping center. Love the kibbe ball soup. They don't have it all the time, but Leslie said I must try the 16 bean soup with the pomegranate and, well, garlic again. He says She says that it is Jamal's grandmom's recipe. I've had several plates and kebab. Anything I can get for you? Juice, coffee, rack of lamb? Definitely get the rack of lamb. Probably my favorite. They have a crazy lunch crowd, fast casual type that generally wouldn't be open for dinner, but they're that popular because this is one of those where you just go up and you order your food and they bring it to you. So it's not really a night out, so to speak, but my son went to North Springs High School and with my dad Ubering and being a theater dad and all that other stuff, I went there quite often and I can tell you they do an impressive night business even on Saturdays and Sundays, even though it's not really built, as I said, for kind of that weekend night crowd. Really my kind of place. It's all about the food. Have been there, oh man, maybe six, seven, eight, nine times. Everything there is good. I really do especially like some of their plates. The Leslie plate is what I had last time. A good combo. I'd really recommend probably getting one of those combo plates so you can really tour the menu, but a very classic no-frills place, Samad Mediterranean Grill in Sandy Springs. Alami's Grill Hala at 11,670 Jones Bridge Road in Johns Creek. You know, I said to my family casually, I guess I got to get another podcast out there for the Atlanta Grubber. And then my daughter said, which places are you going to feature? And that's always a tough decision because I eat at so many places. Well, the tiebreaker, very recently, the legendary writer Christiane Lauterbach, who's been writing about Atlanta restaurants longer than anybody, she mentioned one of my favorite places, which is, of course, Olami. So that kind of bumped it to the top of the list. Now, at times, um, Miss Lauterbach, she does like to question about whether or not restaurants are truly authentic, the type of cuisine that they claim. Uh, One of the examples is here. She says it's more Persian than Afghani. The owners do call it an Afghani restaurant. I really stay out of the authenticity debate, except when it comes to cheesesteaks, but the owners say that it is Afghani, so I'm going to go with that. a couple times. The beef samosa, definitely different than the ones I've had at the Indian restaurants. It was flat, fried, extremely tasty. Also love the perfect charcoal taste on my really tender and juicy lamb chops. And even the rice was high quality. You know a restaurant's really good when they don't overlook the rice. Went a second time with my foodie friend, Jana, who really seemed to enjoy it. This is a great stretch of restaurants, some that I featured, others that I will feature soon on Jones Bridge Road. But Alami's Grill, they only have about the table, about maybe six tables in there. So yet another in what I specialize, no frills, 
but definitely recommend this place and look how many other places around town have Afghani food, Olami's Grill. La Meizi, 5150 Buford Highway in Doraville. It's Chinese and Taiwanese. More Taiwanese when they opened years ago. Has gotten a little bit more Chinese food on the menu. I know the two legendary chefs, Nicholas Buer and Gunther Seeger, the latter probably the biggest name chef in the history of this town. They're both big fans of this place. Daughter and I went, we split wonton in hot Sichuan sauce. Now that was mostly me and chip chicken dumplings. That was mostly her. Although nobody does Sichuan wontons like Ryu Louie, who of course has been nominated for James Beard, best chef in the, in the South for many years. But this was a very good version. I went with a lamb with leek cilantro and hot bean sauce, an excellent dish indeed. More than lived up to the hype. And uh, it's a place that both me and my American Chinese loving family, they all agreed it was really good. I got more for take home and was shocked when even the wife ordered fried rice for later in which I had some. So really a great place where hardcore foodies and, you know, kind of the Mugu crowd alike can go. La Meizi on Buford Highway, outstanding Taiwanese and Chinese. The best sports picks in the world and vet it. Sportsbooks offshore. Insiders.com. Now to sound bites with news, notes, and quick hitters on Atlanta area restaurants. It's an honor to send Billy Kramer of NFA fame to Savory Gourmet, a place I've talked about before. He's a big fan after having the cat's corned beef and pastrami, but like I told him, the newest item there, the brisket, is among the best sandwiches I've ever had anywhere. Yes, Adam now has house-made brisket sandwich. It's with Katz's mustard on the Katz's rye. Um, again, this is a Teasley place in Alpharetta. Said it before, said it again. I've been honored that I've had some sandwiches that have made national lists, including having been at the real Katz's, the original Katz's in Manhattan. And I'm just flat out telling you, you must, must, must go and try the beef brisket sandwich at Savory Gourmet at Teasley Place in Alpharetta. The Dutch at 1900 Everly Lane in Johns Creek, a new live, work, and play development. This is from the owners of Dutch Monkey Donuts, but their new venture specializes in fries. French fries good? Yeah, they're good, all right. Went with a Mexican street corn, kind of like the crab fries in Philly where there really aren't any crab in the crab fries. The name comes from the spices and the same here. Street corn uses cheese except the fries replace the corn in elote, kind of. The wife went with her favorite garlic. We pretty much agree this is neck and neck, maybe though a notch behind. If we had to single out our favorite, Fred's probably stars our favorite fries, but the Dutch very close behind, and best of all, they also have some of the Dutch monkey donuts that you can get there as well. Donuts. Is there anything they can't do? The Dutch in Johns Creek from the owners of Dutch Monkey Donuts. Mercy, mercy me, I can't even tell you how much I love Mitch's Meats at 30 East Crossville Road, Suite 160 in Roswell. Best selections of premium meats and fish. Two types of Wagyu beef tenderloin. He's got prime meats, sushi-grade seafood. What Mitch always says, if he can't eat it raw, he's not going to put it in his case. Cut to order, and for me, I like eating a lot more than I like making foods. The best soups in the world in both quality and quantity. I especially recommend whatever seafood chowder he has that day. Mitch's Meats, 30 East Crossville Road in Roswell. Public Woodstock at 8634 Main Street in Woodstock, the heart of burgeoning downtown Woodstock. Woodstock! Ten years ago, if you wanted to send somebody on a fruitless scavenger hunt, all you had to tell them is to bring back a menu from any restaurant that had things like house-made pastrami or other house-made sandwich meats. Thank goodness those days are gone. Even Woodstock has it. I did get the public Reuben to eat there, plus a hot pastrami on rye and the public club to go. They were out of sourdough, so thus I got it on brioche bun. Look, the sandwiches, they're definitely Atlanta, not New York size, but ranging from 
8 to $14, and that includes a side. The prices are fair and really tough to beat in that price range. I'm not going to say it's quite as good as the General Muir or Savory Gourmet, but if you live in Woodstock or find yourself in downtown Woodstock, this is definitely a very good place to go, a nice alternative to a couple of the other restaurants like Century Tavern or Vincenzo's. Definitely a good place. Like I said, may not be in my top four or five sandwich places in the metropolitan area, but in-house meats, also very good size and good cheap eats. Public Woodstock in Woodstock. Barbecue 2300 Pleasant Hill Road in Duluth. It's in the Great Wall Food Court. I had to reach out to the all-time expert, Daniel Baruvavang. He is the number one Yelper in world history. He told me the best place to eat in that Great Wall Food Court. You got to go to Best Barbecue and get their roast duck. Roast duck, warm fire. Also at Daniel's suggestion, I got some dim sum. I got the chicken bun and what was something similar to shamai dumplings. The duck was sensational. So juicy, tender, nice portion. Also enjoyed the dim sum. I know there's a second location on Buford Highway. My friend, the city slicker, wound up eating at the one ITP the same day that I ate at the one OTP. Best barbecue on both Buford Highway or the one that I ate at in Duluth in the Great Wall Food Court. Sushi Mito at 6470 Spalding Drive in Peachtree Corners. Look, of all the restaurants within like six and a half or, you know, six miles of my house, none make less sense that I hadn't been to more than Sushi Mito. Always heard good things. It's been around a long time, and it's really pretty convenient for me. I guess the explanation is I know when it comes to sushi, I can really go out of control. I just can't really order from the a la carte menu. Money just falls out of my pockets when I do that. We have, though, been several times since to make up for it. Uh, the first time I went, the daughter got Alaska salmon, me the nigiri deluxe chef's choice, and a great sign up front. Even the miso soup stood out. Oh my god, miso soup! Fantastic seaweed salad too. Daughter and I loved. I got the avocado crab meat salad with wasabi dressing. Of course, I spilled a little bit all over me. I spilled wasabi on my shirt one time, people! One time! But quite possibly the best salad dressing I have ever had. Chicken meatball, among others. Deep fried pork cutlet was also good. Ultra Epicure on Instagram. Follow her. She tells me next time order the tempura mori. He, she says it's her favorite. Everything is perfectly cooked and not greasy at all. Three shrimp, a slice of sweet potato, kobachi, zucchini, and eggplant, plus a chunk of broccoli. But sushi mito, a little bit of something for everybody. It's a lot more than just sushi. A large menu, even my very picky son enjoyed it. Sushi mito, peach tree corners. We love From the Earth Brewing at 1570 Holcomb Bridge Road in Roswell, Georgia, the best brew pub in the country, according to the USA Today. Seasonal farm the table menu. I love the shrimp scampi skillet, salmon club, and the wife adores her pretzel bites. Great beer. They rotate, but going out west IPA and can't find my way home among the best. We've also seen some great live bands there. Eat, drink, hang out. Check out From the Earth's menu at ftebrewing.com. BB Mayun. 2180 Pleasant Hill Road in Duluth, Georgia. That is spelled M-Y-U-N. It's Korean. The main dish I got was a seafood somen. You could kind of say it's the Korean cousin to pho or ramen, a really good soup. Also went with the ham kimbap. It's a different kind of rice and a different kind of oil, but it's essentially Korean sushi, though, with some flavors that you won't really see at Japanese sushi places. I've, uh, Went with a ham sushi, in fact, or kimbap. Never had ham sushi until that day, but it was excellent. So much good eats in Duluth. It's one of those myths that you must go to Buford Highway to eat real Asian. Cannot be further from the truth. BB Mayan, and that is on Pleasant Hill Road, also adjacent to the Great Wall supermarket that I just spoke about. El Barro Pollo, 656 West Peachtree Street in Atlanta, near Georgia Tech and the Collective. In fact, near Georgia Tech, we lost the canteen, but we kind of gained the collective. One food hall for another. 
This is from famed chef Hector Santiago. Now, trusted in-town food snob City Slicker had me wanting Humble Mumble. He really raved about that place, but turns out they closed at three, so I did go with his second favorite, another place that one of my uh, in-town food snob, trusted food snobs, did heavily recommend. You know I want quantity with my quality, and both the chicken tortilla soup and the beef barbacoa burrito were really good. All I know is, burritos are delicious. No complaints about the quality and certainly no complaints about the quantity. Really good, plenty big, and you know, by 2022 prices, pretty reasonable. Kind of think Willie's, but if Willie's was much, much better, I'd like to try a couple more things on the menu here, but my first bite went really well. Alboro Pollo, near Georgia Tech. Fly Chef Atlanta, 4015 Holcomb Bridge Road in Peachtree Corners. You know, you could argue if you're going to name a restaurant, you probably want to keep Fly out of the name, but really good Nigerian place, also in a sleepy shopping center. There's a theme here. These are the type of places I like where it's just about the food. Tried the Uguzi, which had much less broth than what most Americans would consider soup, but it is considered a Nigerian soup. You scoop it up, um, and it's described on the menu, Nigerian vegetable soup, melon seeds, red palm oil, African crawfish, uh, beets and fish, seasoning, hot pepper, and greens with the fufu. Now, fufu, if you've ever had Ethiopian food, it's somewhat like injera. It's not quite as spongy, but the same basic concept. So you're eating the soup with your your bread, with your fufu. Uh, the owner, Greg, is a really nice guy. Another place that was pretty impressive, pretty tasty, and I'd like to try some more stuff on the menu. It's open early morning through late night. They have a breakfast menu, even some stuff that's American friendly. But of course, if I'm going to go to a Nigerian restaurant, I'm going to eat what the Nigerians eat. And really good first bite at Fur Fly Chef Atlanta in Peachtree Corners. <laughs> Suffice to say, this is a labor of love at Atlanta Grubber. Uh, if you would at least consider, though, supporting the Star House, my favorite charity, starhousefoundation.org. This helps underserved kids, at-risk kids, get a good education. It is based in my home chomping grounds of Roswell, Georgia. Please go to starhousefoundation.org and see what I'm talking about. What a tremendous organization. And like I said, Duffy Scents, S-C-E-N-T-S, -E for the best. Sensi Products, it's your way of showing support for the Atlanta Grubber Podcast. Everybody knows that Hope Noodleman is a top caterer in the state. She's now a talk of the town catering. You can reach her for all your catering needs, whatever you got. You're planning a wedding, a bar, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, anything. She will plan it for you. You can reach her, hope, at T-O-T-T-A-T-L dot com or 770 594-1567. That's 770-594-1567 or hope at T-O-T-T-A-T-L dot com.